we, this boy serious, man. Cut the break tape, man. You gotta put out fraud if you got to put out any other tapes, I'm telling you. <laughs> Almost overnight, Screw's mixtapes grew from a neighborhood phenomenon to a regional craze. We have to establish order, which is where this gate comes in. He was like, okay, you know what, from now on, we're going to sell tapes at a certain time, 8 o'clock. 8 o'clock, the gate will open. We sell all the tapes we need to sell. By 10 o'clock, we can close the gate. From there, it was like McDonald's, you know what I'm saying? Dude used to open up his gate at like, at like 8 o'clock. <laughs> Man, the motherfucker ride to see this gate open. With this gate open, you gonna know, <laughs> be right there. Yeah, that gate open. You know what I'm saying? Five o'clock, five p.m. The line would already be long, two or three streets down. That's why the feds and stuff thought he was selling drugs. Screw a seven thousand tapes in fifteen minutes, dog. The demand was beginning to exceed the supply, and Screw's growing legions of fans would come at all hours of the night to get that fix. Life. TV world. Huh. Now manufacturing and selling tapes was becoming a full-time job. This uh, time you have cars coming through, they banging music, so a person perception is, was like he doing some illegal activities because you seeing all these low riders and all these type of people coming through their community, but they coming to his house to get this music. When I first seen him with them cars lined up like that. <laughs> I thought he was doing something illegal, you know what I mean? <laughs> For real. You would think that if you stayed on this street and you seen all these cars, drop top convertibles, bourbons, all this just cars backed up, hoodoos and everything just buying you, you gonna wonder what is this dude down there doing? We had our own thing. We wasn't really worried about what was going on in the rest of the world. And when we did hear the rest of the world, it's cause, it's cause uh, DJ Screw was putting us up on it, you know mm -hmm. what I'm talking about? Because we really wasn't uh, checking for nobody unless it was on the Screw tape down here. He brought us on to every type of music. We heard California music, East Coast music, Biggie. We heard everybody through him. If it was something that we wanted to get straight to the street, we would bring it straight to Screw. You know, the Screw, you know, the screw tape influenced a lot of records on that album, like, uh, you know, especially like 3 in the morning. The street level of promotion has always been one that, that I mean, and gets the ears of the uh, radio stations who you're actually trying to meet with, you know, the radio. He's, he's always tell me, he's like, man, I'm like a radio station. That's what he'll say all the time. He was like, you know what I'm saying? If you shit jamming, I'm gonna put it on the app. He, you ain't had to pay screw to put your, like some DJs, you gotta pay them to put your song when they, man, if your shit was jamming, man, screw gonna put it on there. Nigga. South, South Carolina, Carolina baby. Carolina, nigga, we got a whole look at that crowd look at over there. Line, I mean, back then, screw tapes was really like a promotional team with our legs that was able to make it but where legs couldn't go. Man, the appearance on the screw tapes, man, took me places I didn't even dream of. You know, this is shit. I made like six or seven years ago. Just shit that niggas ain't never heard of. And these niggas is telling me they recite my lyrics from Screw Tape. So, you know, Screw did a bunch of advertising again, especially for the people that was freestyling on the tapes, you know what I'm saying? Our shine was really through Screw Tape, you know what I'm saying? You know, whatever. Nobody really know too much about us or whatever, so it wasn't really too much battling going on until I think until people started getting a little shine on, getting deals and stuff or whatever. That's when they, they feel like they got their deal first or something. That when the head got a little bigger than what the next next artist. But it, really everybody really about the same, man. Ain't nobody know. Well, nobody really doing too much no battle until I think to that to that time came up. It wasn't long before SUC members started capitalizing on their new popularity, courtesy of DJ Screw. My whole buzz and my whole everything was from screw tapes. Nobody else didn't know me from nothing else. It was from screw tape, so I owe my whole buzz to screw. Getting $1,500 for one song. To go on stage and wait till 1.58, barely can get into these clubs right before 2 o'clock to do this one verse. I'm talking about, I moved, I moved to 100, 100 grand, 100,000 units, nigga, with no promotion. Yeah. Nigga, I was on the road with my son, with my son, with my son. Big pokey. What did you realize? And I been let come from screw. Underground. Pretty soon, an appearance on a screw tape was better than radio. It's, it's that crazy underground buzz that, you know, only, uh, you know, pioneers from the street can create. 
So, you know, he had something that was, that, that separated him apart from everybody. It take a movement, you know what I'm saying, a lot of times to make something happen. And a lot, and, and very few places you can go where the people embrace their own music. A situation or a scenario like that where everybody out here was embracing these tapes, then now you have the opportunity to take these artists and move them into a commercial situation, you know what I'm saying? And those screw tapes allow that. And you, you need numbers and you need to know that they got fans. And screw definitely had the power to give a nigga some fans. Seriously, do it all again, man. That'll be the only promotion I do. I'll be promoting my shit on the motherfucking screw tape. Hey, bitches, my album coming out this day, this such such day. Go get it. And screw made us a legend, man. A household name, man. We come on, man. We hood, hood dudes, man. You know, doing our thing, trapping. You know what I'm saying? We don't know nothing about putting no 16. But man, when you going out to Austin and Huntsville and all these little places we were going right there and you hearing it, you like, oh man, way out here? Which really they wasn't that far, but you know, you saying, oh man, I'm music stretching way out here with those people with all this screw stuff. Niggas was coming from like Alabama and New Orleans just to come down here to find screw to get them goddamn tapes. They ain't getting one of them motherfuckers. They getting like at least 15, 20 different tapes and they getting like 10 of each. Many SUC members were getting paid for performing their freestyle verses in nightclubs. And then uh, Alexander, Louisiana, at the BFW. We walk in the back door, they pulling on our shirts, you know what I'm saying? Ah. I mean, we had cars and whips, jerseys and money then already, so by us going to them little towns, them, they were they were excited on us riding on blades and big trucks with wood grain and music and all that. You looking out in these this this big old thing of people just out there, people just saying word for word what you done wrote or what you done freestyle. Man, you talking about better than sex almost, man. Wherever you traveling to, man, somebody gonna put it up knocking the screw tape. Somebody. And they are, and nine times out of ten. They gonna have a dude. Okay, we in it for real now. We in here like the NWAs and we really in the game, you know, cause now we getting faint, we got fans for real. And I, I feel like it was something real strong. Yes, we are.